you know, in general terms, I'm highly skeptical of channeling because I looked at it in the 90s and came away thinking this isn't really telling me anything. It's telling me what I'd like to hear. It's very feel good, but it's not addressing all these gritty subjects. It's not drilling down in plain English and telling me what's going on and why it's going on. It's flowery, fluffy clouds, ascension. We're spiritually enlightened. We're going to land soon and we're going to sort all your problems out. Don't worry. Surrender, kick back, relax. In the meantime, some farmers got 30 sheep with no eyes and a hole in their heads. Welcome back. I'm here again with Matt Hurley, who is the host of the Bad Alien dot info website info yeah and what we're going to talk about today is what he thinks is really going on in the background surrounding these animal mutilations human mutilations disappearances and abductions so matt welcome back and what's your theory where does it come from and why is it important okay so Several years ago, Linda Moulton Howe did an episode on her channel and she talked about a retired defence intelligence operative who told her that there were three competing extraterrestrial groups on Earth that want this Earth for themselves. So when you read a, a statement like that, you're always looking for corroboration. Mm-hmm. So a couple of years ago, someone sent me a link to a website called The Allies of Humanity. And it's basically four volumes of channeling. It's all free online from five beings that you could consider a friendly extraterrestrial races, channeling through a guy called Marshall V and Summers. And basically what they are, they're observers. They're observing the activity of aliens on Earth. They're spying. Is Marshall hmm. still around or is he still with us? Yes. Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah. He's doing a live podcast today, actually, as I speak. So I'll be watching that later. Okay. So, yeah, so you've got this group of aliens called the Allies of Humanity. And they're watching from a distance and they're spying on the aliens who are on earth and they've channeled these four volumes of work through marshall this work basically in pretty good clarity tells you what what these beings are up to and why they're here so essentially what it says in a nutshell is you've got more than one one race coming here each race is multi-ethnic so you could have like a short gray a tall gray a reptoid so one one group isn't necessarily one ethnicity that they're multi-ethnic there's several competing groups and they all want the resources of this earth. So resources, we might mean animal parts, human body parts, rare metals, flora, fauna, whatever. They all want this planet. What the Allies say is, historically, when you get civilizations that become very technological, they tend to strip the resources of their planet. Then they either become dependent on trade with other civilizations or they get absorbed into like a big collective. And what you've got existing in our galaxy, according to the Allies, are these co- groups of cosmic scavengers that go around, wait until planets get to a certain level of advancement, and then they come in with their strategy of building bases, working behind the scenes, creating hybrids, and then they can gradually influence and take over the planet. Now, a few other interesting things the Allies say is, a lot of these aliens that are visitors can't breathe their atmosphere for long, and they don't have any biological defense against things like influenza, COVID, etc. Because a lot of them are born in sterile environments on, on spacecraft. They're, they're quite biologically weak. So that's why they can't take over a planet in an overt way. So they have to create hybrids using local DNA merged with their own. So in order to carry out this takeover program, there's basically several strategies that these aliens are employing. So I've mentioned the hybrid program. They've also built bases around the world, under sea and in mountain ranges. And some of these bases have got like antennae and they can beam out subliminal messages to to a a certain radius around these installations. It's a way of influencing people's behaviour. Another thing they're doing, they focus on certain leaders, religious and governmental, to get them into a mindset of getting into war situations with other countries. So, for example, Putin may have been influenced by them. The idea being that if you're going to take over a planet, it's easier to do if everyone's fighting amongst themselves and the populace losing trust in its government, who will then look to an outside source as a saviour, as, as an outlet, if you like. Oh, well, they won that battle be... about two years ago. Yeah. So. 
<laughs> rather than just having a unified race that everyone's getting along and everything's fine. Yeah, it's, it's much harder to use your strategy, your takeover strategy when it's like that. So they've got these several different programs that they're operating behind the scenes to ultimately take over this planet. And it all boils down to the fact that all beings in the universe, whatever their culture or et cetera, they all have the same basic requirements of survival, security, and the acquisition of resources and extending power. And this planet, apparently, according to the Allies, it's, it's a rare planet in terms of its biodiversity. It's quite broad in the, the range of biological rich, richness. And so these aliens from their, their barren planets come here and, and want to take all the candy. So in a nutshell, that's basically what's going on. And there's more than one group. Now, why do they wait until there's a certain level of technological sophistication? Would it be easier to just come in before? I think the idea is it's easier to sort of have some communication with the populace when they're at a certain level of technological awareness rather than being a primitive agricultural society. So, for example, if as the stories tell us that they met certain members of the American government in the 1950s, it might have been at a point where humanity might be less superstitious, might be able to communicate with them on more of an even playing field than if they'd approached someone during the French Revolution where they might have been more superstitious and may not be able to think in a more clear manner, if you get my drift. If you met someone in medieval times and you were from Zeta Reticula, it might be more <laughs> difficult to establish some sort of agreement than if you meet someone, relatively speaking, is in the modern age. And what do you think got their attention was it the atomic tests in 1947 or not i think sorry in the early 40s yeah like that could well have been a point a red flag i think all civilizations get to a point where they develop weapons of mass destruction and potentially destroy their own planet so obviously if you want to take over a planet you don't want the locals to wreck it if you want to take over a shop you don't want the current owner to destroy all the stock as it were so that would be a strong impetus, a pointer for them to then come in and accelerate their program. Okay. Now, you said there's three competing? The species. Defense Intelligence Operative told Linda Morton how there were three. The Allies of Humanity don't say how many, but they say there's more than one. So there's a sort of a loose corroboration there. Okay. And this channeling thing... Yeah. What what kind of gives you credence that that's more I'm accurate the most, than yeah. the billion other I'm the channelers, most, right? I'm the, I'm the most skeptical person in the world of channel. I spent a fortune on channeling books in the early 90s. I had cassettes of the Ashtar Command. You know, initially, wow, all these people are in touch with aliens. This is amazing. And after a while, I start to smile around. Well, it's not telling me about abductions. It's not telling me about mutilations. It's not telling me about missing people. Apparently, I'm going to ascend and I'm going to enter the fourth dimension. And that they all make predictions that didn't come true or they make predictions that conflicted with each other. So it's highly sceptical of channeling. The only thing really which makes me resonate with the Alice of Humanity channeling is the fact that it addresses all these dark points that this other channeling material doesn't. If you're a researcher, you always want to be looking for corroboration from different sources. Now, that guy mm -hmm. told him how there was more than one race. Alice of Humanity is saying more than one race. Alice of Humanity are talking about abductions, mutilations, missing people. Yeah, I can see that's going on. I've created sections on my website. So we've got a source there that seems to match what's going on in the field. If you were to ask someone what's it like in North Korea and they circumvented any mention of a lack of freedom, you've been fed disinformation. And that's how I see a lot of traditional channeling. It's circumventing all those negative aspects and giving you this sort of false narrative. Which it could be real, but it could be exactly what if you take your theory, what these entities want them to believe, right? Yeah. But if someone's channeling truth, you would have to be seeing that in reality. And what they channel mm -hmm. to me, I don't see us entering the fourth dimension anytime soon. The other thing as well is you've got to remember this phenomenon has had, what, 80 years to inform us of its identity, where it's from, mm -hmm. what its agenda is, and it hasn't done that. So for me, that's a massive red flag. So I, I need a source outside of what's going on here to tell me what's going on. I don't want to learn it from these guys because they've had several decades to do that and they've just left me confused and I've wasted a lot of money on channeled books. Yeah. The other thing with Alice Humanity, it's all free online. So that's another good pointer. 
Yeah, and I can put the link. No money to be made. Okay, so if they're kind of channeling that they're these scavengers that are here. Yeah. What is humanity supposed to do, or what can humanity do? What they emphasize is awareness. The more people that know about what's going on, eventually you'll have a critical mass of people that will be mentally aware of what's going on. And this is where it gets slightly woo, because what they're saying is the aliens that are here don't have much physical power, but they have a lot of power in the mental environment. So if you've got a critical mass of humanity that are aware of what they're doing, it will create this strong group thought form and that these beings will lose their powers of persuasion that they've currently got. As well as the physical environment, they talk of a mental environment, an invisible environment full of thoughts and persuasions and beings influencing other beings, etc., etc. So it's all about awareness. And once there's a critical mass, then these beings essentially will have to pack up their bags and leave. That's what they say. So without kind of mass evidence of this stuff, because that's one of the biggest problems. Like there's no, yeah. like I, I can say that I believe some of these stories, but I don't know. Like I've never had mm. to my knowledge, to my conscious memory where I can say, I know this is real because I've experienced it. Mm. So how can people share this knowledge in a way that they know that this is really the case? Cause right now to me, it's just a theory. Yeah, right? just like the benevolent alien thing is just a theory. Yeah. Like I don't know. Yeah, look at the data. Look at abductions. Look at mutilations. Look at it with a clear. Don't start out with any. I want it to be bad. I want it to be good, and and just right. see what your mind tells you. Look at the data and form an opinion on it. Read all the books. Read different points of view, and then come to your own conclusion. But it's, it's taken me a long, many decades to get to the. The place I am now. I don't have every question answered that I've I've got, but this allies material has answered a lot for me, and I, I I find comfort in the fact it's addressing a lot of this dark stuff that I find that's occurring in the phenomenon. Like I said, it's had seventy plus years to tell us what's going on. That's not a good thing. They appear to have had meetings with certain military personnel, but not the general public. Again, that's another, another red flag for me. Given trinkets from space, potentially given the military spacecraft intact. Why are they doing that, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because even in the Grush reports, he mentioned that, that they found a craft fully intact, open, yeah. no occupants, no sign of occupants yeah. anywhere. That's I think John weird. Lear, John Lear on George Knapp's show in about 88 said something very similar that the US government had about, I think it was 12 to 15 craft and three of them were pristine. Allegedly, one was being test flown, and then the rest were in various states of damage. But yeah, several pristine craft. Yeah, and I don't think the U.S. is the only one that has these things. Yeah, but that's, uh, absolutely. That's I mean, you look at the size of Russia. I mean, Asia. That's a big landmass for stuff to crash on. Yeah, yeah I'd imagine Russia one Asia, sixth of the Earth's land area, something like that. Yeah. And how many have crashed in the sea? What percentage of the Earth's surface is water? How, how many are lying on seabeds? Yeah, it's like 75% or something like that. So Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've no doubt they, they may have approached other governments as well. They will always, they always target the, the most powerful countries. I, I'd imagine that's their strategy when they go to planets, right? Which country or countries have got the most dominant? Who's the main military powers, right? We'll, we'll give them some trinkets from space and, you know, take it from there. That's the strategy they use. So any advice that you might have for people who are – other than kind of sharing some of the stuff. And the problem with the data too is it's mixed, right? And there's a lot of misinformation, disinformation in that data as well, like deliberate by the intelligence community. So it is very difficult because you've got the government that are disinforming people and the aliens themselves are, are, are up to shenanigans and disinforming people. So you're getting disinformed from different sources. So yeah, it, it is very tricky to try and sort the wheat from the chaff. I would just say approach the subject with an open mind. You know, there are a lot of wild, wacky ideas out there and some, some bits very scary. I mean, initially, when I heard of the idea that aliens had met the government, I thought, well, that's nuts. But now, especially after Grush saying it, it's, it sounds a distinct possibility. And, yeah, look at it with an open mind. Don't be biased. How do people react to your theory? <laughs> 
What's that like? What's that like? Because I'm, I want to survey the whole field and yeah. try to. I like all yeah. I care about is the truth, and I yeah. think every theory needs to be explored in order for you to get to the truth, regardless of whether or not it's pretty, yeah. it's happy, it's scary. I just want to know the truth, and I think my audience I mean, is the same way. So how I, people I, reacted. Mixed, I suppose. I, I mean, if I get invited to do an interview, it tends to be people who sort of resonate with the material on my website, generally speaking. I haven't had any difficult interviews as yet. I've had quite a lot of visits to my website, but I don't tend to get emails from people, so I don't have a huge amount of feedback. I think this year I've had about 87,000 visits to my site, probably had oh, wow. about eight emails. Um, I get a lot of plugs on Reddit, so I'm very grateful to the people that put it on there. But to be honest, the main draw really is the human mutilation is due to the fact that it's an area that isn't widely covered on a lot yeah. of other websites and, and podcasts. So that, that, that's the main carrot that's drawing people in, into my website. But in that, that section, I don't know, I'd have half the visitors that I've got, in all honesty. Yeah, yeah, sometimes the absence of evidence is the evidence of absence, right? So in other yeah. words, one of the reasons you might not be seeing this stuff is because it's actively being suppressed. Yeah. So... You know, again, in my view, I I think there's a wide variety of things that are associated with the phenomena. And I think not all of it is benevolent. I think there's certainly a malevolent aspect to it. I don't know what prevalence that is, but for every, even if you take stuff that's more associated with the woo than with kind of nuts and bolts UFO topics, if you take Bledsoe, right, Chris Bledsoe, that's a very like positive aspect of the phenomena. But you can pair that with Skinwalker Ranch, which is a very dark aspect of it, and vice versa. So, yeah, I don't know where I sit yet because I just the more I delve into this topic, the more complex it gets in terms of trying to explain what's really going on. And I don't think it's just there's a physical aspect to it, but there's also a non-physical aspect to it that's difficult to pin down. Mm. I mean, like I say earlier, for me, the others of humanity, it's the first channel I've come across, which is addressing these dark subjects. You know, if there's other channel out there, let me know, because I'd like to read it. But it does seem to have its niche in the marketplace of addressing these dark topics that the other channelers don't. But, you know, in general terms, I'm highly skeptical of channeling because I looked at it in the 90s and came away thinking this isn't really telling me anything. It's telling me what I'd like to hear. It's very feel good but it's not addressing all these gritty subjects. It's not drilling down in plain English and telling me what's going on and why it's going on. It's flowery, fluffy clouds, ascension. We're spiritually enlightened. We're going to land soon and we're going to sort all your problems out. Don't worry. Surrender, kick back, relax. In the meantime, some farmers got 30 sheep with no eyes and a hole in their heads. Big conflict between the two, what they're telling you and what's going on. Well, if there's one good thing about what you do is it's very non-consensus. And there's not anybody else, as far as I know. I think Jacobs was the last person. Mm. And he's I mean, he's still around, but he's yeah. retired, for lack of a better word. Look, I reached out to him, no response. But he does say yeah. explicitly that he doesn't do interviews anymore. So mm. I think you're going to get a lot of attention in the next two years. So just be ready for it. This one of your psychic intuitions. <laughs> I've seen some of that already happen on this podcast. Like, I don't know if you follow David Morehouse, but he's been on Beyond Skinwalker. He wasn't on the main show, but he was on the website because they couldn't fit it in into one of the episodes. But then he's going to appear on The Unexplained with Shatner at some point. But the re- not the reason, he's been on stuff in the past, but one of the producers at History Channel discovered him on this show. When I was a much, I mean, I'm still a small channel, but I was a much smaller channel at that time. So you never know. They're going to have to find a bad alien guy. And right now you literally have a website. Yeah, Yeah, you've got the niche. And it makes, you know, whether or not people believe it, it's an interesting theory that you have to explore. You Mm. can't have a full comprehensive picture Mm. because these things did happen. Right. And you can't just bury them and say they didn't happen. Like something Mm. did these things. And it's unlikely that it was human because it's so weird, bizarre, so precise with the cutting, things like that, that it has to be addressed, whether or not it scares people. So Mm. 
I appreciate you, man. And you're doing God's work, even if it's even if it's darker than some of the other people doing God's work. Like you need to have a full comprehensive picture. It's a dirty job. <laughs> it's a dirty job and somebody's got you're the micro of ufology, right? Yeah. 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 Up to my knees in it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my friend. Thank you again. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please click on like, subscribe, and the notification button so that you're alerted anytime I post something new.